Hey, today I want to give you the four and a half, yes you heard that right, four and a half tips you need to create awesome blues bass lines. I'll see you inside the video. Hey guys, it's James here from E-Bass Guitar. And today's video is inspired because we are just in the final processes of putting together and releasing our brand new Texas Blues Jam backing track album here at E-Bass Guitar. This will be going live sometime next week as we make this video. So the Texas Blues Jam backing track album is all about taking 12 world-class blues tracks and making simple and repeatable backing tracks that you guys can get mesmerized and lost in. These are inspired by legendary artists such as B.B. King, Kenny Wayne Shepherd, Allman Brothers, Etta James, the Blues Brothers, Gary Moore, the list goes on. So what we're gonna do today is take the level three bass line to Stormy Tuesday, which of course is inspired by Stormy Monday by T-Bone Walker or the Allman Brothers, and give you four and a half tips which you can apply to all of your blues bass playing. So just before we hit the video content today, I want you to know it's a completely free PDF which comes with this lesson of level three of Stormy Tuesday, exactly what you'll get in the Texas Blues Jam backing track album. You can download that PDF using the link in the description below. Number one is learn alternative blues sequences because this makes playing the blues so much more interesting and versatile. So what I mean by that is many of you will already be familiar with the typical 12 bar blues using chords one, chords four, chords five, maybe even with the quick four change. But today I wanna look through Stormy Tuesday with you because this uses a ton of alternative changes which sound absolutely fabulous. So let's just talk through the form so you can see where this goes. So we're in the key of G. We start off with a G7 chord, chord one. Then we go to chord four, which is a C7 chord. Now this is where things start to get interesting. On bar three, we play a G7 for two beats, and then we go up to an A flat seven for two beats, and then back to the G7 like this. Then we go to the typical two bars of C7 after that for two bars. Now again, this is where things get fascinating. So what we do is we play two beats of G7, two beats of A minor, two beats of B minor, then two beats of B flat minor, and then that takes us into the five chord, and then we have two beats of E flat, then two beats of D, and then we have our typical one, four, one, five chord change. And this is what really starts to add the spice and variety into blues sequences. And this is a sequence if you're going to blues jams, which you must wrap your head around because it is so, so super cool. So let me show you specifically what the last six bars sound like with all those other juicy chord changes. Number two is subdivide the beat. So, so many blues tunes are slow and we as bass players need to be absolutely rock solid. So Stormy Tuesday is in the time signature of 12-8. And what that means is we're going one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. And what we need to do is we need to drill into those triplets or the three notes which are in between each beat. And how I personally do that, there are two ways I do it. 
The first one is I subdivide internally. So what I'm doing is I'm stamping my foot on beats one, two, and three. One, two, three, four, like that. And then in my mouth, I'm going one, da, 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 da. I'm actually making that noise in the back of my throat to get the subdivisions. Dun, do, 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 do. Now, the other thing I'm doing as well is I'm really listening to the drummer's hi-hats, which are the pair of cymbals over here, and listening to that and locking into that. So what I want to do now is play the first few bars of the track, and I really want you to subdivide, play the pulse with your foot, subdivide in the back of your throat, and really listen to those ticking hi-hats. Number three is use note length. Note length is absolutely critical in playing blues bass. The difference between long notes and short notes. And Stormy Monday is a prime example of that. And I want to show you this from bar seven. So we're going to start off with long notes, which you've heard a lot through this piece, and it sounds like this. So, and then when we get to the D7 chord, what I want you to do is notice how we then use short notes up at the top. Then back to those long notes. And what that does is it gives real differentiation to our blues groove and really starts to propel it forward when we hit the D7, which is kind of the pinnacle of the sequence. So I'm gonna play that with the backing track now and really listen into the note length that I'm using, the difference between the long notes and the short notes and try and integrate that into your bass playing. we're halfway through i'd love to ask you if you're enjoying this video please make sure you subscribe to the ebass guitar youtube channel because we release a lesson every single week designed especially for beginner to intermediate bass guitar players who want to take their bass playing to that advanced level there is a red button somewhere around this video and you'll be the first to know when a new lesson goes live so tip number four is to learn two important shapes and those shapes are the box shape and the major pentatonic forward position. As you'll see from Stormy Tuesday here, so many of the chords are based on seventh chords and you'll find this across the whole gambit of blues. And so it's really important to understand what bass lines work over dominant or seventh chords. So the basic chord tones or the triad or arpeggio behind a G7 chord, for instance, is simply a G, a B, a D, an F, and a G like that. So get that under your hand. Now, here's how we start making that sound cool. So the first one is the box shape, which is literally the root, the fifth, the seventh, and the octave. And you'll see this in so many bass lines. So let me draw your attention to this. So bar three of it, you can see the descending box shape coming down, like the first two beats of this. Then he takes that pattern up, that half step, and then back down. To the next chord. So really notice in the PDF that you'll get with this lesson how those box shapes are falling all over, play, over the place. Now the next bass line that you need to make sure you check out here is the major pentatonic forward position. So when we go to bar five, which is the C7 chord, we end up with this. You'll hear that a lot, especially in slower 12-8 music. So those notes are simply the C, then we slide forward into the E there, and then the fifth or the G there, and then we hit the sixth of the chord, and come back down like that. And that will 
work over so much of the blues sequence and work beautifully over these seventh chords as well. So let me play you the first few bars of the sequence and really look out for those two important shapes. <laughs> number four and a half, which is slightly tongue in cheek, is grab yourself a copy of the Texas Blues Jam backing track album. The reason being going back to tip number four, one, which is all about learning alternative blues sequences. This album is all full of slightly different blues sequences, which you need to have in your arsenal, which makes them super fun and exciting to play. So again, they're inspired by artists such as B.B. King, Kenny Wayne Shepherd, the Allman Brothers, through to Gary Moore and ZZ Top. It's a ton of fun, but crucially, what makes this backing track album different is we've given each track three to five groove levels, which means you can learn three to five bass lines for each track, which work all the way through from beginning to end, not just isolated riffs, but proper, proper bass lines, really authentic too. In the backing track album, there are over 40 bass lines that you can learn. So what I suggest you do is grab yourself a copy of the Texas Blues Jam backing track album. If you're watching this video a little later down the line, the Texas Blues Jam album will be live. So click that link in the description below, ebassguitar forward slash Texas to grab your copy. Right now, I'm just gonna have a really good jam over the Stormy Tuesday sequence so you can see where the ideas in this whole album can go. Guys, that's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you grab that free PDF so you can play Stormy Tuesday from beginning to end. Make sure you check out Texas Blues Jam backing track album. Again, link in the description below. And also, if you want to really, really, really push your bass guitar playing forward, jump over to ebassguitar.com and check out our programs, the Bass Lab Plus and Bass Lab VIP. I'll see you next week. <laughs>